figured it out. <laughs> Voice of reason, the, the solid, uh, hold it down, the beige rage, and the agitator. <laughs> The Breakfast Club. Everyone just kept telling me to prep for this. One word to describe The Breakfast Club would be black. Impact in the culture. People watch The Breakfast Club for, like, news and really be tuned in, man. I don't even know what to call it The Breakfast Club. It's like brunch. Envy, Ye, and Charlemagne. Wake that ass up, get out of bed, and listen to The Breakfast Club. I'm waking up. Day. Yo 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 Good morning Angela Yee Good morning DJ MV Charlamagne welcome back Peace to the planet Guess what day it is Guess what day it is Pump day <laughs> Good morning. Yes, it's Wednesday. It's hump day. It's middle of the week. Good morning to you and you and you and you and you and you. How you feeling? How y'all feeling today? I'm feeling good, man. Welcome back, man. Uh, glad to be back. Okay. It's good to be back. Andy it's back to you. be good. Mm -hmm. It's back to be acting bad. No, oh, shut up, man. Acting what, bad, bad. What'd you say, Yee? I said, Envy missed you. I mean, my, my, my bae over there gonna throw out a picture like that and then don't come to work? Okay, all right. What picture What picture did I you throw You know out? what picture I'm talking about. You want to be a model now? Morris half a nut or a chestnut, whatever you call yourself now. Mm. Half First of all, I got, four, I, got, I, got, I got four daughters. <laughs> I've never, ever only delivered half a nut. Clearly. <laughs> okay, I don't know what the hell Only with Envy. <laughs> all right. right, it's too okay. early for that. Well, welcome no, you're back. talking about uh, the, the 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 quintessential gentleman, uh, the quintessential gentleman. Yeah, they put they're, they're they're a media platform for black men by black men, and mm -hmm. um, they're committed to celebrating the achievements of black men. So they put me on the front cover of um, uh, their magazine. So dropping the clues bombs for the quintessential gentleman magazine, and I just uh, finally learned how to uh, pronounce quint quintessential quintessential quintessential. Properly. You still don't have it right. Oh, see, I'm still not doing it right. See, it's just I don't like know why. essential, Every time I say it. but with quinta in front of it. Yeah, that's what I keep thinking, right? But I don't, I keep saying the Quinta Brunson. The what? The, Quinta, the quintessential. Quinta <laughs> the, the, quintessential the quintessential gentleman. Yes. Oh, my goodness. All right. Well, What does quintessential mean? He don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Just ask him. <laughs> it sounds classy. It sounds very classy. I don't know okay. either. It sounds very bougie. It's a real bougie. word, guys. Quintessential. Yeah, I okay. don't know what it means. I just either. Googled it. What it says, it represents the most perfect or typical example of a quality or class. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, it don't even have to be, well, I guess because the, the, the example they use is he was the quintessential, quintessential, quintessential tough guy. Quintessential, man. The Quinta Brunson tough guy. Yes. I don't know. So, it's a classy word. You're just happy to be on the cover, <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> oh, perfectly perfectly typical or representative is a better way, I guess. Okay. To say it. We'll take that. Yes. We'll take that. Well, welcome back. Today on the show, we have uh, attorney Benjamin Crump. He'll be joining us this morning. Big Band. Yes, he has a new uh, documentary that hit in uh, Netflix. Netflix this Sunday. It's called Civil. Oh, it comes out on Sunday? Okay. It comes out on Sunday, yep. Mm -hmm. And also we have uh, Nadia. What's Nadia's last name? Hall Green. Hall, Hall Green will be joining us. And Tez will be back. So we'll be kicking it to them. Tez and Figaro. Now, right. Nadia Hall Green did Becoming for Michelle Obama, that documentary. But she also directed my girl Ida Rodriguez's Fighting Words special for HBO Max. That's right. So I met her in Puerto Rico her while they were filming that. Mm-hmm. Does her does that her doc drop on uh, Sunday too? It's Ben Crump's doc. Oh, Ben Crump's doc. Yeah, okay. yeah, she, Crump, did, yeah she did. Ben, ben Crump. Crump's doc. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sunday is Black Gay Father's Day because what? it's um what? it's Black Gay Father's Day because it's what? Juneteenth, right? Okay. Juneteenth yeah. is Sunday. Yes. Uh, and it's Pride Month and it's Father's Day. So you combine all three, it's Black Gay Father's Day. So salute to all the Black Gay Fathers out there. So what do we do? I have no idea, what? but you're celebrating them. it. You just, go make, just, just make just up a holiday, and then when, it, when you don't, I'm not making up a holiday. I'm just letting them know they have a day. It's, it, it, you're combining all three. It's Blackness, which is Juneteenth. Mm -hmm. It's Pride Month, which is the Gay, and then it's Father's Day. It's so also it's Caribbean Heritage day. Month. See, Black Gay Caribbean Father's Day. <laughs> I'm not messing with y'all this morning, man. You know what I'm saying? I'm not messing See? with y'all this morning. All right, well, let's get the show cracking. Front Somebody pages. out there represents all four of those categories. You're I can guarantee you that. You're absolutely right. But let's get into front page news. What are we talking about? 
All right, well, we'll be talking about hair this morning, and uh, we'll be talking about alopecia and a special treatment the FDA has approved. Also, uh, on the opposite side of things, toxic chemical in hair products that has increased breast cancer is something that you need to be aware of. All right, we'll get into that next. It's The Breakfast Club. Get your ass up. Good morning. Morning, everybody. It's DJ MV, Angela Yee, Charlamagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. Good morning. Let's get in some front page news. All right. Now, Thursday, everybody's been asking when the next game is. Of course, the Warriors lead 3-2. to two. The next game is this Thursday at 9 p.m. in Boston. Warriors in six. Warriors in six. Mm-hmm. You think they're going to take it in Boston? I think, the, I think the Warriors close it out in Boston um, on Thursday night. I, you know, initially I said uh, Warriors in five before the series, but then I said uh, Warriors in six before the series. I think that they close it out in Boston on a. Uh, Thursday night. I don't think that the championship caliber team that the Warriors are, I don't think they're going to play in the garden. No. Nah, okay? I, I think I, it's going to be silly, like video game. Nah, video game-ish. I think Warriors in seven. I, I, I think with, with Boston, with that crowd, with the fan support and all that, I think they're going to win. But we'll see. Nah, I think the I think the Warriors then took their heart the last two games. Think so? I think Steph goes for like 50 in the garden. Clay goes for like 30. Okay? Because Tatum may Andrew really, Wiggins. Tatum huh? may really pop off yet, so I think Tatum's going to go crazy. He has to yeah, go crazy. He's doing game. what he can. All right. He's doing what he can. What All right. It? Now, there's a new study that says hair and beauty products marketed to black women contain a class of toxic chemicals that is not only linked to an increased breast cancer risk, but also uh, fuels the spread of cancer cells in black women in comparison to white women also. So the study uh, analyzed the parabens, and they determined that parabens increase the growth of breast cancer cells in black women. And it's a group of chemicals. They use parabens in these products to keep mold and bacteria from growing. And so it prolongs the shelf life. But in humans, parabens can mimic estrogen, which is a hormone that leads to dangerous cell growth. They said black women are likely to buy and use hair products with these types of chemicals. But we don't have a lot of data showing how parabens may increase breast cancer risk in black women. And part of that is also because black women don't get picked to take part in most research studies looking at the link. And studies to test this link have only used breast cancer cell lines from white women. So uh, they have this new study, which was conducted by the Bent to Community Initiative that brings together scientists, community activists, breast cancer survivors, and hairstylists to study that link. And black women in general are also more affected by breast cancer. They're 41% more likely to die from breast cancer, and those under 50 are twice as likely to die from breast cancer than white women. So that's why when we talk Man. about beauty products and we're like no parabens, no sulfates, it's really important to make sure mm. you read those ingredients and in the products that you're using. All right. Mm -hmm. And the FDA has approved a full body treatment for alopecia. And that's an autoimmune disorder that can cause hair loss and baldness occurring in patches on the body for the first time. And that's what Jada Pinkett Smith has, alopecia. She's uh, spoken about it. And they have approved approved oral tablets called Allium, um, I don't know to pronounce this right, Allumiant, Allumiant. It's a treatment for adults with severe alopecia. Now, they had previously approved treatments for the disorder that addresses specific parts of the body, but this is the first FDA-approved alopecia treatment that treats the entire body. And more than 300,000 people in the U.S. every year are affected by alopecia. And individuals with the disorder, the body attacks its own hair follicles, which causes the hair to fall out. The all all you mayant treatment is designed to prevent that response. I thought everybody had like a little form of alopecia. Like you know, I I, I could be wrong, but that's not true. No, everybody. I think have I don't it. think all yeah I don't think all hair loss is alopecia. Mm. But but I, I, let me ask a question: mm. Who gets the medal of honor for raising awareness to alopecia? You is it Chris it. Rock, oh, Will it. Smith, or Jada Pinkett Smith? You're not going to tell me that it. the incident at the Oscars didn't raise awareness for alopecia. I haven't even heard the word alopecia said this much since that incident. I guarantee if you do some type of Google research, it'll show that uh, alopecia was searched more after that incident at the Oscars than before. Of course. So who gets the who gets the Medal of Honor? Who gets the is it a is it a group effort between Chris Rock, yes. Will Smith, and Jada Pinkett Smith, or is it just Chris because he did the GI Jane joke, or is it just Jada because she suffers from alopecia, or is it because Will, you know, administered the slap that you know got everybody talking? All Which the, is it? All of the above. I think it's a I think it's a collective effort. They should collectively get a Medal of Honor for raising awareness Shut for alopecia. Up, man. All right. I'm serious. Well, that is front page news. Get it off your chest. 800-585-1051. If you need to vent, phone lines are wide open. Again, 800 
585-1051. Get it off your chest. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. Wake up, wake up. Wake your ass this is your time to get it off your chest. Whether you're mad or blessed, we want to hear from you on The Breakfast Club. Hello, who's this? Yo, this is Dominique from Duval. Dominique from Duval! Duval! What's up, brother? Good morning, good morning, good morning. Y'all yeah, want to get off my chest, give a shout out to my wife, man. She be busting her ass all week long, cooking, man. Oh, y'all follow her on Instagram at the D-A underscore pretty brown. On the score, sure. Okay. All right, why, why she busting her ass cooking this week? For, what is she getting? She getting ready for Black Gay Father's Day? You stupid. Uh, yeah, she getting ready for that too. But she knows she's a uh, personal chef, private chef. Okay. Most correct. Congrats to her, uh, man. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Y'all have a good morning. All right, brother. Hello, who's this? Hey, good morning. Um, this is Clay calling from North Carolina. Clay, good morning. Get it off your chest. Yes, I would really like to thank y'all. Uh, well, first of all, I like to say good morning. DJ Envy, good morning. Uh, Charlemagne the God, and good morning, Miss uh, Yee. Good morning. Good morning, sir. Um, peace, peace, my guy. How are you? I'm doing great. Blessed and highly favored. <laughs> but, there you uh, go. I would, but I would like to say thank you to you guys because you guys don't really know the impact of um, what you guys say and um, on the way people listen to you because I just recently bought a house um, here and um, every morning I used to listen to you guys and when um, DJ Envy used to talk um, about buying the house, I used to listen. I used to tell everybody in the car, shut up, shut up, shut up. I need to hear this and everything. And I never took one of your classes, but I used to listen. And one thing that you used to say about that credit, you gotta get that credit right, you know? And um, I recently bought a house back in October and um, I'm so happy. I'm so happy. Well, congratulations, brother. Congratulations, That's brother. That's what we try to do, man. We try to encourage things that we learn outside in this world. We try to, you know, make sure that we teach our people and, and try to explain to our people. We don't know all the answers all the time, but we just try to point people in the right direction, brother. But you guys really got it on um, impact. And Miss Yee, um, you know, a lot of a lot of these young girls are really listening to y'all. You know what I'm saying? You. So um, just keep doing this, y'all. And I, me personally, I thank you. Thank All right, you. Brother. We appreciate you. Love, brother. Now, shout to, um, you know, July 31st, CZ and I are doing a, a seminar in New York, the Jacob Javis Center, where we're going to be talking about real estate and breaking down, you know, how to get into it, starting from credit repair. And we're actually going to do something special. We got a, a bunch of brothers coming through. I know the brothers from EYL will be stopping through. And we got credit repair. And, and we're going to be talking about hard money loans and, and conventional lenders. And also, I know um, the brothers from EYL are doing a Invest Fest again this year in Georgia. So if you can't make it out to the Jacob Javis Center July 31st, uh, make sure you make it out there. And these are just you know ways where you can learn the game, learn the business. Uh, I, I like what EYL is doing because they're doing something similar to what we're doing, where we're not trying to charge people three, four, five thousand, ten thousand dollars. Because I always say, if you got if you got that much money to spend on a course or a class, I'd rather you just buy the house. So we're really both of us just trying to teach our community how to do it, how to build generational yeah. wealth. And Invest Fest is uh, August fifth through the seventh in um, Atlanta. I'm, I'm actually going to be there. Okay. Yeah, as well. So salute to salute to EYL. So definitely get your tickets, Jacob Javis Center, July thirty first, uh, and uh, or you can, like I said, Invest Fest in Atlanta. Get it off your chest. 800-585-1051. If you need to vent, hit us up, and you can hit me in, in um, my um my link in my bio because I'm gonna be at Invest Fest as well. So either or, you can check you it out. You a sneaky link? <laughs> what? What? Me and you That's how it sounded. You can hit me. You can hit me. I got my link in my bio. You gonna be with me? So what do you mean sneaky link? Yeah, you little sneaky link. Yo, shut up, man. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. Get it off your chest. The Breakfast Club. Yeah. This is your time to get it off your chest, whether you're mad or blessed. So you better have the same energy. We want to hear from you on The Breakfast Club. Hello, who's this? Hi, this is Misha. Hey, Misha, good morning. Hi, y'all. Hey. Okay, I want, I want to say why I'm blessed. Um, I lost my mom in February. So but sorry. But before she passed, thank you. Before she passed, she was helping me develop my business. Um, and I recently launched my website. I'm starting off small to gain capital. 
Um, basically, I want to create a clothing line that caters to the alternative black community and pop culture community. Um, and I have a lot of things in the works right now. The company is Big Bad Waifu, W-A-I-F-U dot com. Um, and Charlemagne, I would love to send you some stuff because I do have, I'm trying to get um, permissions from like, you know, Marvel and everything to sell stuff, officially licensed merchandise or whatever. And I would also like to shout out another business. I came across her stuff while I was getting my stuff in order. And she looks pretty dope too. She's tapping into a market that I'm not, and she is the official bad waifu. But yeah, oh, also not, uh, a little bit of. Go ahead. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, I was, I was gonna say I definitely uh, would like to wear it. Could, but could you school me to what alternative? What is alternative people? What do you say? Alternative something? Oh, Clothing. the alternative black community, basically like yeah. What um, is that? The goth people. Okay. Um, and oh, you know, like okay. Yeah. Um, the Hot Topics kids is what we used to call them back in yeah, the day. Yeah, pretty much. Um, also, I do kind of have beef with you, Charlemagne and Envy. Y'all used to have a Friday ritual that kind of pregame for the weekend. And y'all just stopped, man. It used to get me so hyped for the weekend. Like, I can understand I think- y'all not wanting to do those specific songs anymore. <laughs> But can y'all like do something again, please? I think I think so. Our, ca- our camera guy Nick actually said that last week because you remember last week I was in here and we I was singing uh You Will Know by Black Men United because you know I got a bunch of Negro spirituals that get me going like You Will Know by Black Men United, Sounds of Blackness, Regina Bell, God is Good, Crime Mob, Nuck If You Buck, DJ Yola, Ain't Gonna Let Up. I think we might have to start doing that. I would love it so much, please. Mm-hmm. All right, we'll we'll see, Misha. Thank you. I love y'all. You have a good morning, all right? Love you too, Queen. Hello, who's this? What's good? Guess who's the Zach on the mo- on the Breakfast Club with both of my bros? Angela Yee, this is Anthony Greco. What's good, Envy? Okay. Guess who's the Zach? What's up? Who's hey, this? What's up? <laughs> yeah, man, I was getting you. Last week, you was letting bro know, yo, you good at the car show. Come to the car show. You and your son, you good. I'm like, yo, how could Envy tell me and my son to come to the car show? Like, why, why are we not good? Where you, where you from? I'm from Queens. But I know the show is gonna be in Atlanta. I live in Atlanta right now. Okay, but the show is actually gonna be in Houston this Sunday. So if you go, if you go this no, Sunday, no, not Houston. I'm talking about the ATL show in, in July, July 19th. July 9th. You from Queens? July 9th. You want to go? Yeah. You want to get your tickets there on Eventbrite? Bu- right, oh, no. I knew wow. you was gonna do that. Yeah. That's disrespectful. <laughs> see, 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 was right about you when you was out last week. He, he was, he was definitely right. What he, he say? Right. Uh oh. What he say? Nah, never mind. It's all good. It's all good. I keep it between us. I keep Don't worry about what we talk about when you're not here. Yeah, if you were, you know you had your mixes going and you wasn't even tuning into the show, like what's good? You, you, we need to do the e mixes from now on. When you're not there. <laughs> E-mix. <laughs> well, the show is July 9th in Atlanta. Oh, you said ignore the e mix. No, you got me. So, so me and my son, you, you, like, you. you like, oh, yo, Phoenix and Greco, they good at the door. Let them in. Whatever they want, whatever they need to do, they good. That's 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 what we, that's the vibes we on. Phoenix is good. I don't know about Greco. Your son is good. I don't know about you though. Oh, see, <laughs> see how we do, but. I, July 9th. We, we in the A. Well, well, I'm going to see you there. We're going we gonna to be there. You from, gonna be there. you from Queens. I got you. Phoenix is all good. You, I don't know about. What part of Queens you from? Southside Jamaica, 40P. You sound like you from Brooklyn. I don't know. I can't let you in, bro. Brooklyn. Nah, Brook- no, I'm sipping on. They still good. They 718, but I'm from 40 Project. <laughs> all right, man. Hold on, man. Hold on. I got you, Brooklyn though. keeps on taking it. Hey, you Yo. know what I want to get off my chest? I just want to say uh, Instagram, please. Please stop suggesting people, uh, suggesting posts related to people. Like, just because I viewed somebody's page doesn't mean I need to see suggestions on who to follow. Between that and bots on IG, it's like going to somebody's house and they didn't tell you that people you don't want to see are going to be over there, too. The bots are serious. Bots, I, 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 the, it's to the, the point, it's, it'd be 30 different bots, and I'm like, enough's enough now. The bots are terrible, but that please, that that uh suggesting posts related to people where you be scrolling on your timeline and they just be posting videos from people that you don't even follow, I can't stand that. And I, I just really hate every time I go on Instagram, I got to think to myself, who all over there? Okay. All right. Well, get it off your chest. 800-585-1051. Now, we got rumors on the way? Yes. Boosie Badass. He is looking for three men. Who want to suck some toes? Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, That's a okay, tea. okay. That's a tea. Okay, Woo. it's Pride Month, baby. <laughs> What's Sunday? I told What'd y'all. You I told Sunday, y- was? Sunday is Black Gay Fathers Day. I already told y'all. Woo. It's Father's Day. It's Juneteenth, and it's Pride Month. Black Gay Fathers Day is upon us. Yeah, better leave Boosie alone. All right, we'll get to it next. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. 
Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Angela Yee, Charlemagne the God. We are the Breakfast Club. Let's get to the rumors. Let's talk boost of bad ass. It's time, time, time. She's spilling the tea. This is the rumor report with Angela Yee on the Breakfast Club. Well, Boosie is looking for three men who went to suck some toes, and they will get paid for this. This is all for a pool party that he's hosting, and they want to make sure that the women get treated really well. These girls been talking about they want they toes sucked at the party, and you know I got to get it for them, so uh, I need three I need three n- who going to suck some toes. The girls going to, you know, we gonna, you going to get money. The girls going to pay you, uh, but I need some toe suckers. Wow. I respect that. That's why you get you a contract. Get you a contract to make sure everything is uh, consensual. And, you know, you hire people like that dude that calls up here all the time. Big Chocolate the oh, Toe big Sucker. Chocolate it's toe your sucker. time to shine. Now, not for nothing. Call, your, sure, call your people, ye. I'm sure there's some people out there that, that'll take that job right now, depending on what the pay is. I don't know if we want anybody just sucking our toes. He said any man. So, it, I mean, minimum wage is $15 right now. So, if if, if he could beat that and you go out there and suck some toes. You and there's some yeah, guys but, that but have that real to fetish you, to do things like that. And you could get paid for it because normally they'll pay you. Right? Normally guys would be but, like, I'll pay you if you let me suck your toes. And but you yeah, you're right, that. though. You, you said... You said she don't want just anybody sucking her toes. Like, shouldn't the women be the ones uh, being able to choose? Maybe Boosie should get, like, a bunch of different guys mm. and then let the women choose which guys she wants uh, like a, to suck, suck her toes. Like a bachelor or bachelorette, like a flavor of love type of thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but it'd be flavor of feet. Mm. I see where you're going mm-hmm. with this. I see where you're going I, with I this. Know, I know, Envy, you want to get in on it because you always post your toes on Instagram. No, no, I don't. No, I have a wife. I'm married. But yeah, stop posting my toes on Instagram. I got enough's enough. But you're the one that posted. That's I, what's crazy. So. All right, now um, let's talk about Melody Hobson. So if you wasn't married, you'd let a man suck your toes is what you're saying. No, I did not. I did not say that at all. What's wrong with you? Oh, okay. You kinky this morning. how he interpreted it. You kinky this morning, bro. All right, now, Melody Hobson, are y'all familiar with that name? She's a chairman no, at that? J.P. Morgan, and, and she's also a chairman at Starbucks, and she has a portfolio of smart investments. And she also will be on the uh, ownership of the soon-to-be Broncos ownership team. Oh, yeah. She's a black woman. Oh, okay. That's yep. Dope. Yes, and so there have been other black women who have held limited equity stakes in NFL teams like Serena and Venus Williams, but those were acquired after a new ownership group takeover. This would be the first time ever that a black woman is publicly identified as part of an original ownership group purchasing an NFL team. Uh, Russell Wilson said that he actually had a chance to speak to the new ownership. He said to be able to talk to her, what a tremendous accomplishment and what a gift to be able to do what she's going to be able to do, to be the first black woman, right, to be able to do this. It's a big deal. This is history, and I think that maybe has gone over people's heads a little bit. I love it. Yeah, and she's married to uh, George, the, the, Lucas. The, the, the George Lucas. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and she's uh, she has a great portfolio. She has her own um, company, Ariel Investments, and so she's been doing it. I think she also did like the whole DreamWorks um, Mert deal. She did that whole deal for them and everything. So she's a huge yeah. She used to be a chairwoman deal. for DreamWorks, and then uh, I, I think once they got acquired by. But I think it was NBC or somebody. She and she said led that. that acquisition. So, yep. all right. Now, Amber Heard has done her first sit-down interview with Savannah Guthrie. And she's talking about the defamation case that was brought forth by Johnny Depp. And she says that she still stands by everything that she says. Uh, here's what she had to say about the jury's decision. Don't blame them. I actually understand. He's a beloved character. And people feel they know him. He's a fantastic actor. Their job is to not be dazzled by that. Their job is to look at the facts and the evidence. And they did not believe your testimony or your evidence. Again, how, how could they, after listening to three and a half weeks of testimony about how I was an uncredible person, all right, now, it was a six-week trial, and they went through a lot of the uh, darkest moments of their relationship. He was trying to absolve himself of allegations that Amber Heard made in a 2018 Washington Post op-ed. She described herself as a public figure representing domestic abuse. She never named Johnny Depp, but they said that the claims, everybody knew that that's who she was talking about. He's denied all allegations of abuse, and so he sued her for $50 million, saying the accusation hit, uh, hurt his career. She countersued him for $100 million, saying that his former lawyer defamed her when he called her claims of abuse a hoax. At the end of it, ultimately, he was awarded $15 million that got uh, lowered to $10.4 million, and she was awarded $2 million. 
when the jury found that her his lawyer did defame her on one count. All right, here's what she had to say about feeling devastated by this whole thing. Vast majority of this trial was played out on social media, and the jury is not immune to that. You think they, the jury saw it? How could they not? I think even the most well-intentioned juror, it would have been impossible to avoid this. Every single day, I passed three, four, sometimes six blocks, city blocks lined with people holding signs saying, burn the witch. And after three and a half weeks, I took the stand and saw just a courtroom packed full of Captain Jack Sparrow fans who were vocal. This was the most humiliating and horrible thing I've ever been through. I have never felt more removed from my own humanity. I felt less than human. All right. And, but that's going to be a phenomenon that's studied for years to come, like mm -hmm. social media and its impact on things like trials. Because she's right, it's impossible for jurors not to see what people are saying on social media and be influenced by that. But, you know, they did have audio recordings of her saying things that contradicted what she was saying on the stand. And oh, so absolutely. People did not believe her. And so some of those clips or transcripts, she says some of them are not re representative of the two hours or three hours that those clips are excerpted from. That's what her... Uh, rationale is for that but she did say that she does have some things that she regrets all mm -hmm. right well that is your rumor report i'm angela yee all right we got front page news next what are we talking about yes and let's talk about donald trump you know he has issued his own statement in response to these january 6 hearings all right we'll get into that next it's the breakfast club good morning the breakfast club your mornings will never be the same Angela Yee here. The General Insurance is a quality insurance company that's been saving people money for nearly 60 years. Switch to The General and you could save over $500. Call 800-GENERAL or visit thegeneral.com. The General Auto Insurance Services, Inc., an insurance agency, Nashville, Tennessee. Some restrictions apply. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV, Angela Yee, Charlamagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. Let's get some front page news. This Thursday, all right, what is it, Game 6, NBA Finals. That's War right. Warriors versus the Celtics at uh, Boston. So that happens at 9 o'clock. Y'all know I got Warriors in 6. I got Warriors, I got Warriors in 6. Steph, Steph Curry uh, was 0 for 9 last game from three-point land. He's going to score 50 in the Garden on Thursday. Clay going to score 30. Wiggins going to give you another 20. And it's going to be all she wrote. All right. What else you got, Easy? That's all 100 right. points from three players. Well, the House Select Committee, the January 6th Committee, has postponed the uh, hearing that's supposed to happen today. Mm -hmm. And the next hearing is now scheduled for tomorrow afternoon at 1 p.m. Eastern. They said it's just for technical issues. It's not a big deal. It's nothing else. They said the staff putting together all the videos, doing it was overwhelming, so they're trying to give them a little room. And they also did say there will be two hearings next week, one on June 21st and another on June 23rd. Both of those will be starting at 1 p.m. Eastern, and the committee has been laying out the case for what they are saying is Trump's responsibility for the insurrection. And so there were lengthy portions of former Attorney General William Barr's deposition with the committee. He described in detail why Trump's fraud claims were bogus and why he has seen nothing since to convince him that there was fraud. Now, Donald Trump has issued a 12 page statement amidst these hearings saying that, um, you know, basically, same things he's he's been saying. He's uh, saying that these hearings are a smoke and mirror show. He also said that there's no witnesses or anybody who can easily point out the flaws in their story. He said America is crumbling and Democrats have no solutions. Our nation has no hope of change for the better under Democratic leadership. People are desperate rather than solving problems. Democrats are rehashing history in hopes of changing the narrative. Now, the members of this committee, includes two Republicans, have pushed back at the characterization that their invest investigation is motivated by partisanship. Instead, they said their work uncovered the extent to which the former president worked to undercut the democratic process and also to remain in power. Well, you know, it's interesting, right? Because two days ago, the insurrection panel said it gathered enough evidence to indict Trump. Mm -hmm. So what is Attorney General Merrick Garland and the Department of Justice going to do? If they don't indict Trump after saying they have gathered enough evidence to indict Trump, then I don't see the point of any of these panels. It, it will look like it was just smoke and mirrors because all you're doing is making Trump supporters feel like this is just another witch hunt. If you keep accusing someone of something and say you have evidence that is enough to indict them, but you don't indict them, it makes it seem like all your evidence is cat. Yeah, I mean, I think because, again, these hearings, they don't have the power to do anything, you know, out of these hearings. It can then the Department of Justice has to take over and they have to figure yeah. out what to do. It's Mer been a, a long investigation. And so now what? Right. We need to make sure and that that's there's what I've been saying. Now what? 
But that's why I said it, it, it's what is AG Merrick Garland and the Department of Justice going to do? But if, if the insurrection panel says it has enough evidence to indict Trump, but the, the attorney general and the Department of Justice don't do anything, it does look like all of this is just smoke and mirrors. Like, you can't just continue to accuse somebody of something and then say you got enough evidence that, you know, you can indict them, but don't do anything about it. It just makes it seem like the whole thing was just a political waste of money show in time. Yep. That's right. Well, you know, and there's elections uh, that are going on, so they want to make sure because people are they're trying to say that there's voter fraud. There's a lot of lies that candidates are basing their campaigns on. So it is important. There's never before heard, uh, you know, evidence and testimony that people are getting to hear for the first time so they can base their opinions on that because a lot of people believe things without having the facts. So people really have to pay attention to what's going on. And there does need to be some action. I don't think Trump should even be allowed to run again. And there should be some criminal action taken against him. Yeah, but people not people sounds not right. people not listening to this case. Yeah, it, it, everything you said sounds good and it sounds right, but people care about action. And if there's no action taken, then it looks like these actions are just cap. Waste of time, waste of money. All right. Well, that is front page news. Now, when we come back, we got some special guests joining us. Uh, we have uh, Attorney Benjamin Crump, who has a new documentary movie that comes out this Sunday on Netflix. It's called Civil. The director, Nadia Hallgren, will be joining us. And Tez, Teslin Figaro, will be here as well. Teslin Figaro. All right, so we're going to be the hood kick, whisperer. kicking in with them when we come back. So don't move. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ MV Angela Yee, Charlemagne the God, Tess as well. She's been here the last two days, so you part of the breakfast. Yes, yeah. 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 we got some special guests joining us today. Tess is back again, and we also have Nadia Hall Green. Welcome, thank you, and of course, Attorney Ben Crump, who has a new documentary called Civil that's out June nineteenth. Well, good morning, guys, and thank you for joining us. Hey, good thank morning. you, King, for having us. Now, for people that don't know, break down what is civil, what it's about, and tell us all about it. Certainly, Angela Yee, I am always in awe of you, so I say that publicly. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. Civil is a Netflix documentary coming out on Juneteenth. Uh, it was directed by the young, brilliant director, Nadia Hallgren, mm -hmm. uh, this uh, African... Puerto Rican, <laughs> all kind of flavors in there. Mm -hmm. Give it up for that. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Which is becoming also. Yeah. Good, yes, and she man. did Ida's Fighting Words, Ida I Rodriguez. Did. Yes, yeah. thank you so much. Mm -hmm. I mean, she is it. Her vision is so incredible. I mean, it followed me for 18 months during a pandemic where we had not heard of George Floyd mm. when they started filming. We had heard of Ahmaud Arbery, but hadn't heard of Breonna Taylor mm -hmm. at the time. And she is capturing all this footage intensely while we're dealing with these families and so many other things like banking while black, environmental racism, fighting for the black farmers, doing, and she, more than anybody else, just understood the moment. This isn't just a documentary for today. This is a documentary as Kenya Barris and I, who's the producer, uh, created Black, is saying, this is a documentary for our children yet unborn. Mm. I'm so glad you're here because there was a call that we got. I don't know if you were here, MV, last week, but somebody called in. They were talking about Larry Nassar and how there's this lawsuit against the FBI because of Larry Nassar and how mm -hmm. they knew about the cases against him, but they didn't act on it. And somebody called in and they were like, well, this is disgusting. What, do, what is money going to do? Why do victims need money if they're truly victims? And this is just a money grab. So I know this is something that you as a civil rights attorney can speak to. So I would love for you to talk about that when people try to say, oh, they're just trying to get some money or he's just yeah. chasing money and trying to fatten his wallet. I try not to listen to the haters much because I understand my mission, my queen Tess, she say, <laughs> no, you gotta go back out on Crump. I'm like, <laughs> I, I don't have the time because I'm so focused on the mission. The mission is trying to say to people psychologically and consciously to American society that no, no, we matter. We deserve equal justice. When you have a wrong against us, we have a right 
not only based on the Seventh Amendment of the United States Constitution, but just based on common sense. We have a right to send the message that you can't do this to us and get away with it. I, I'm representing a lot of black and brown people in Los Angeles County at McLaurin Hall, mm -hmm. which was a children's shelter in Los Angeles for 50 years. Mm -hmm. Black and brown children were being raped and sexually molested, and the county just looked the other way. Right. It's been all these years, and now California, because of things that were happening in Boy Scouts and Catholic, the Catholic Church said, we're going to give you three years. Anybody who was molested in those things when you were seven or eight years old, you have a right to come forward. Think about those people. Yeah, the only thing you can get is money. You can't go back and give them their innocence back. Right. Right. But when you have that civil compensation, it makes the county pay. It makes the corporations pay and those type of things. And like we say on the trailer of civil, if anything America understands... It's, it's money. Capitalism. It's capitalism 101. And when you start making people pay, then they change their conduct or you keep going until it becomes financially prohibited for them to be able to afford to treat black people and brown people like second class citizens. Now let me chime in on that though right quick because he gave you the Martin the the Wait, I always say I'm Malcolm and he's Martin. Tess, before you go. Yeah because you know you I'm about to go there on the <laughs> money you thing. Go, I want you yeah. to Because a lot of times people yeah. don't have the knowledge right so sometimes yeah. people call here or I see articles and they say Attorney Benjamin Crump is an ambulance chaser right. He chases just to make money or to fatten his pockets right. Mm -hmm. And when Tez came up here she spoke so eloquently about yeah. You don't solicit anybody. Yeah, people have to reach out to you, and many times people reach out to certain other attorneys or other other anywhere anybody else, and nothing gets done. Yeah, and they don't see it get done to until you step on the stage. Five hundred calls a day. So now, yeah. you, now, now talk your. Yeah, yeah I'm about to talk my. <laughs> so yeah, so to the Dumbos in the comments, I'm speaking directly to them, and again, this is not a reflection of Attorney Crump. These are my own statements. When people say it's not about, it's all about the money, first of all, that makes no sense. Only 5% of Attorney Crump's cases are police brutality. That's number one. Nobody talks about the $100 million lawsuits that he's been able to get for folks who are alive and well, the mm -hmm. $600 million lawsuits he's been getting alive and well. America or any government has never paid uh, for the value of black life. And so I find it amazing that the same people in the comments that will sue McDonald's for a slip and fall feel that it is not, it makes no sense if <laughs> someone takes point. your life and you feel that that family should not deserve compensation for their children that's been left behind. What are they supposed to do? Exchange Roman noodles like in the pen? Mm -hmm. The only thing we have is the money compensation but to ignore the fact that attorney crumb pushes for the criminal uh punishment to ignore the fact that policy actually comes out of these cases when you talk about the brianna taylor law when you talk about the andrew uh andre hill law yeah. when you talk about 100 cities that have now enacted police reform since the murder of george floyd it has been because attorney crump and, and a few others and i'm saying a few just to be generous have brought these cases to light there are billions of dollars every year that are settled based on police brutality I ask people, why is it that your local attorney and your hometown never wants to take these cases? Why is it? It's not certainly not for a lack of advertisement. Every commercial you hear every day is if you've been injured in an accident, yeah. if you've been injured in an accident. So why don't they take those cases, Angela? That's the question I mm -hmm. ask people. Why don't you see them? Well, the answer is in which we point this out in the film. They do not want to upset their DA. They don't want to upset the governor. They don't want to upset their chief of police. They do not want to be blackballed and send the death threats for pennies. And I'm going to say this and, and I'll be quiet. When you look at these cases that Attorney Crump takes or any civil attorney, these cases take years, two, three, four, five, six years. You don't earn a dollar. So I would ask anybody in the comments, are you willing to work for 40 hours a week for three, four years straight? Maybe, maybe not get compensation at the end. It just makes zero sense. It doesn't add up. The math doesn't math. So when you hear those comments, ambulance chasing, no. Everybody say that to us, their loved one in the ambulance. I'll use one story, my Robert, a case I worked on in 2015. The stepfather, Mom Robert, said, do not, I don't want Ben Crump, because the family called me first, because their son was being dragged all through the media. They called me first and said, I don't want Ben Crump, I don't want none of that coming down, because he's an ultra-conservative. Mm -hmm. Tulsa, Oklahoma, ultra-conservative. Black man, but a conservative. But once his 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 son got started getting dragged in the media, then it was, can you call attorney Crump? Because nobody was willing to stand and change the narrative. The narrative that has changed in the media affects the jury. It affects right. how they make those decisions. And so now, seven years later, 
later, they're passing the Monroe Bird Law. And that's the stuff that people don't keep up with. All right, well, don't move. We got more when we come back. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. It's DJ Envy, Angela Yee, Charlamagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. We're still kicking it with Attorney Benjamin Crump. Teslin Figaro and Nadia Hall Green. Does that discourage you at all? Yeah. Like, no matter what, you out there to do good, right? Yeah. And then, so when you got people and people that look like you that you're fighting for and they go at you, does that discourage you at all? Envy, I try to be a student of history. Thurgood Marsh is my personal hero. Martin and Malcolm, these are the people I emulate. People don't understand that they were hated mostly by black people. Mm. You know, we have this revisionist history now that everybody loved them. But when they were at their peak, they were the most hated people in America by both white and black people. And so I always try to remember that and say, God, I know what mission you put on my shoulders. And I'm going to use these blessings, these influences to try to affect a better world for our children. And I'm never discouraged by anything, as we said in the film. Don't be a spectator. If you feel you mm-hmm. can do something, get in the arena. The easiest thing in the world to do is to sit home and be a critic and don't do anything else. The hero is the person who puts themselves out there, risks their reputation, their family safety, and even their life, and say, this is about more than just me. We have these bank and wild black cases mm-hmm. where we have recovered millions, hundreds of millions of dollars for black people. Mm-hmm. Over 200 million to be exact. Let's put the number out there so they can know in the comments. <laughs> and, and it's it's so <laughs> astonishing to me, Envy and Angie, that people will say, oh, it's just about the money. What do you think banks and corporations are doing things for? Are they doing it just for uh, charity? Are mm-hmm. they doing it mm-hmm. just because they had nothing better to do? No, they're doing it for the money. And so when we take on Wells Fargo, who we're currently fighting now because they were denying black people mortgages mm-hmm. during a pandemic where the government had gave an opportunity. And I digress. I got to say this, y'all. Absolutely. During the pandemic, because they were worried about the economy, the government gave historic incentives to uh, decrease the interest rate for home loans lower than they had been in 75 years. Mm -hmm. Y'all understand, for poor people, middle-class people, the quickest way to uh, gain wealth and equity is to be able to purchase a home and pass something on to your children and their children. That's how you get wealth accumulated. Well, even with all of this, Wells Fargo was denying Black people, white people were getting incredible incentives to increase their wealth by saying you got a 2% interest rate. You might save a million to $2 million just because you were able to refinance. They said no to black people. And so now I can worry about the Negroes in the comments so I can go say, no, Wells Fargo, you probably stopped black people from getting a billion dollars in equity. So guess what Ben Crump going to do? Mm-hmm. I don't care what you say. I'm going to get those black people that billion dollars. But well, Nadia, yeah. let's let's talk to you because this is a yeah. spicy room if you haven't seen yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. the yeah. filmmaker in the corner as always. So, so let's talk about, you know, you directing this and what made yeah. you want to do this film? Like most of us, I was sitting home during that time when everything was happening in America, the pandemic, George Floyd's murdered. And I'm like, I'm a filmmaker. I need to be out there doing something. And then I get a call from Kenya Barris and he's like, I've been working on something with Ben Crump. We want to make a documentary. Do you want to get involved? So grabbed the camera and just got on the road with Ben. And I just knew that this was a moment to document history and what was happening in America. And you also showed Ben Crump's family, his mom. Um, Now, why was that important in framing this story? One thing I thought was so special when I met Attorney Crump was just who he is as a person, as an individual, His, his values, you know, at the highest standard and where that came from. That was that hard for you to expose that part of your life? Because that's not something you ever do. It is very hard to expose <laughs> your personal life. Mm-hmm. Uh, I will say this. My mom was here at the Tribeca uh, Film Festival premiere. And we, we grew up in the projects. My mother raised me and my two brothers and her baby brother working two jobs. I mean, doing everything for us. And uh, it was so beautiful for my mother to see what she did. Mm -hmm. I mean, Mm -hmm. a standing ovation. And then out in Times Square, they got Netflix really has invested in this uh, movie. 
and they have a billboard 80 foot off the ground on 42nd and Broadway. And for my mama to say, we started in the projects and now we're here. I mean, it's just a testament to a strong black woman Absolutely. who's saying, I won't let this world destroy my children. Mm -hmm. And so my mom and my wife, my daughter, everybody yeah. in this film, they just kept it real. They ask, kept it too real. How's your family deal with it? Because it's, it's you know, it's like anything else. I mean, if you could just take all the, the, the negativity, it's all good, but it bleeds into your wife, it bleeds into your kids, and then... You know, Tez was talking uh, the other day about the death threats. Yeah. So, so how do you, how how does your family deal with it? How are they okay? It, it's hard. Obviously, as adults, we understand what we're doing. My nine-year-old daughter watched the film for the first time yesterday, and she said, "Daddy, you got a death threat," and she was very concerned about it. Nine years old. And so we had that conversation about, "Baby, Dad is out here fighting for you to have a better world." And sometimes people don't want to see our black children have an equal opportunity mm -hmm. at life. We have to fight for our rights. We can never take stuff for granted. Mm -hmm. And she was like, but you didn't do anything wrong. Mm -hmm. I said, baby, I know that. And you will learn that some people feel that they're superior to us because the color of their skin. And that's always a difficult conversation to have with young people because they want to see the best in the world. She was asking me questions. Man, she is terrified by these school shootings. Mm -hmm. I think we all are. Yeah. For your children mm -hmm. to have to deal with that trauma, what happens, Daddy, if it happens in our school? You know, so we talk about those things. I think about how my wife, my brothers, everybody, in their mind, they are prepared that it could happen and we have to protect your family when you're on the road so much. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're constantly checking on them and everything. And that's the other side that Tez was talking about. My law partners, now, we don't make that much money doing police brutality. We make our money from doing mass torts and class action work, stuff mm -hmm. that, you know, is going up against these corporate titans. Mm -hmm. This police brutality, civil rights work, it's something you do because you care. Right. Nobody does civil rights work to get rich. Right. It's the least profitable division in my law firm. I pray so much that we can close down the police brutality division of the Ben Crump law firm because then that would mean Trayvon would get to live because somebody then profile him. Ahmaud Aubrey. I mean, all these young black people in the film Nadi has a part in a 15-year-old, a 18-year-old, and a 19-year-old in a week's time all get killed by the police completely unjustified. But if we could somehow have them look at our children like they look at their children, mm -hmm. then our children would get to live. And that's what I pray for, man. That's what I'm fighting. I've made enough money. I, I, I'm going to be okay. My law firm would rather I just stop doing the civil rights. they like, you did enough, Crump. We can make money a lot easier and more of it if you would just quit doing the civil rights work. But I'm like, then I would be selling out my soul. Mm -hmm. No, it's about fighting for our children, man. All right, well, don't move. We got more when we come back. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. Morning, everybody. It's DJ Envy, Angela Yee, Charlamagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. We're still kicking it with attorney Benjamin Crump, Teslin Figaro, and Nadia Hallgren. So let me ask you a question. Now, Nadia is the director. What's the biggest takeaway you get out of this documentary? What I hope, Envy, is that when people watch this film, they have a much deeper, nuanced understanding of what life is like in our communities than they ever have before and that they understand the work that Attorney Crump does. You know, something we spoke about earlier, just this idea that civil law and criminal law are actually two different things. Right. Mm. And we were surprised in this film when we showed it to people and they, they didn't understand it. So just to give people a basic understanding of how the, the law works as well. So it's an educational tool, yeah. but it's really for, to bring people in and show behind the scenes of what these cases are really like. 
other outside of the press conferences and the news cycle. Ted, you want to curse anybody out? Uh, anything no, else? You I don't think I want to curse anybody out. Yeah. You got to have the final word. <laughs> the final word. No, I, I, I just think I'll just echo. You know, yeah, can uh, I say this before sure. she say the final word? It, it is important that people understand civil law and criminal law. Yeah. Because the prosecutors, I think, intentionally sometimes lose these cases. We have never lost a police brutality case, but people sometimes can't distinguish the two. And so I think Nadia does a good job of reminding people of what we should have learned in seventh grade civics class, that the government is the only people who can prosecute you and put you in jail. And then the Seventh Amendment says if you've had a wrong that you believe has been put upon you, you have a right to sue them. Mm -hmm. And if the jury agrees with you, you are entitled to compensation. And the law has some reason for that because they don't want people trying to solve their disputes in the street by shooting and killing one another. No, no, you come to the court of law and if a jury agrees, then the only thing we can give you is monetary damage. That's the accountability. That is the accountability. And, and, and before and Ted gives her final word, I do want to say that I know you've been inspired by Thurgood Marshall and you speak on it all the time, but I feel like after seeing this, kids will be inspired by you. And that's the thing Absolutely. that will make the next generation want to become active, become attorneys, become civil rights attorneys and make sure that they do what's right. Absolutely. We appreciate Amen. you. Thank you. Tess, Tess, you Tess, Tess. I drank a sip of the positivity water, so I will leave on a positive note in me. Stop encouraging me to be cuss folks out. I will say this, and I talked about this in uh, my last Breakfast Club interview on my Push the Line training that's coming up, Politics Until Something Happens. I want to give a quick shout out to Tex66. 866 push the line to 66866 what is that about it is about getting in the fight what people should get from this documentary at the end is ben crump says get into the arena i know who i am and i know whose i am Amen. and what does that really mean you got three ways to get involved now you can just be in the comments or you can get involved on the criminal side mm -hmm. to push for that folks get arrested mm -hmm. to push to end qualified immunity like what happened in new york city by the way like Amen. what happened in colorado by the way you can talk about uh, making sure folks get arrested you can talk about the protest side you can talk about the punitive damages side which is what attorney crump does or you can talk about the policy, which is what I talk about, which is one over 100 cities have passed some level of police reform that nobody talks about. Yeah. We still have to push on the federal level for the George Floyd Justin Policing Act, but over 100 cities have made some difference. The bottom line is you have every opportunity to be involved. My logo, Push the Line, it has each person pushing, one pushing the P, the U, the S, and the H. Nobody's paying attention to what's going on beside them. There's a child on the side that is watching with their fist up, watching what it is that we're doing. So you can push or you can talk in the Bible, whether you are a believer, and I'm only talking to the believers, mm. it says that at the end, you know, we talk about who's the goat, who's the goat, who's the goat, who's the greatest of all time. We love throwing that around in hip hop. But in the end, there is going to become a time where the goat will be separated from the sheep. What is the sheep? People say the sheep is who follows and who does what man does. But in the word of God, it says that the sheep is about the shepherd's business. Mm. So you are either going to be about for the least of these, mm -hmm. or are you going to be one of the goat? that are not here to serve those who have been in prison, to serve those who have been disenfranchised, to serve those who have been marginalized. And when it's time to make that accountability, and if, if, if I'm wrong, then I don't have nothing to worry about. If I just disappear into existence, fine. But what if I'm right, DJ Envy? Mm -hmm. If I'm right, there's going to be the question, what did you do? And the answer won't be, well, I was in the DM. I told Ben he should do this. I told Tessa she should What did you do for the least of these? Yeah. You've been challenged right now to do something one of those three, four things. Don't worry about what Ben doing. Yeah. Get in the arena and get your squab on. It's plenty of people that's talking from the stands. We talked about that Friday. Everybody at the game. But guess what? We don't all play the same position. Mm -hmm. I've never once seen LeBron James turn around to the stands and say, what y'all think I should do? Should I go this or this? <laughs> <laughs> Attorney Crump got to focus on playing the game. Mm -hmm. And then you got people like me that's on the sideline, on the bench, cheering them on. Let's go, let's go, let's go. I was a cheerleader all through school. My job was to say, let's go, but to also challenge at the same time, say, Attorney Crump, I don't really like that. I'm not feeling that. But I'm on the court in the game. Yeah. So if you just in the stands talking you just understand it's talking let's start walking and let's be about our business there Peace. you go hey. 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 civil is out this sunday father's day yeah. june 19th juneteenth 
definitely check it out and we appreciate you guys for joining us you hashtag civil and twitter and there's can. only one phone call that when they call we always come to work and open up and that's when attorney benjamin crump calls it doesn't matter if we on vacation <laughs> if it's a pandemic if none of the workers if, if, if angela Yee's out i'm out Charlamagne's out you get here yeah uh, every we love you king we love angela. you y'all are the voice for our people thank you thank, thank you so you. much it's the breakfast club good morning it's the breakfast club good morning i wanted to say <laughs> <it again. laughs> Get it, get morning, it, everybody. It, what? Get it, Carol. Good morning, what? everybody. It's DJ MV Angela Yee, Charlamagne the God. We are the Breakfast Club. Let's get to the rumors. Let's talk. You know what I want to learn how to do, man? No. Oh. <laughs> I'll tell you later. You kinky. Listen up. It's just in. All the guys. Gossip. The rumor report. Gossip. Gossip. With Angela. Angela Yee. It's the rumor report. The Breakfast Club. All right, so Gunna has written a letter to his fans from behind bars, and this is all in Mrs. YSL Rico case that he has going on, and he said, 2022 has been one of the best years of my life despite this difficult situation. This year I had the whole world push and pee. Growing up from where I come from in a marginalized neighborhood, I never dreamt my art would change my life and the lives of my loved ones. My entire life I've seen black men, black women, and black children constantly attacked, hated, murdered, berated, belittled, silenced, judged, used, and held captive. Now he goes on to say, the picture that is being painted of me is ugly and untrue. My fans know I love to celebrate life. I love my family. I love travel. I love music. I love my fans. I have all faith that God will grant me justice for the purity in my heart and the innocence of my actions. As a black man in America, it seems as though my art is only acceptable when I'm a source of entertainment for the masses. My art is not allowed to stand alone as entertainment. I'm not allowed that freedom as a black man in America. It is a sad reality that slavery is still alive in America today and still affecting my people in 12 states. More than half of the prison population is black. One of those states is Georgia. And he ends it with, we will, we still push and pee. Power, prayer, progress, passion, productivity, praise, precision, peace, prosperity, patience, pride, and persistence. Okay. So that is Gunna's letter for you guys uh, to hear while he's in prison. All right, the final episode of the Wendy Williams show will air this Friday. It is an end of an era, 13 seasons. And Wendy Williams will unfortunately not be present for the final show. A spokesperson said, the final original episode of the Wendy Williams show will air on Friday, June 17th with a video tribute. To the iconic host, the series comes to an end after 13 successful years in syndication. I would love to see Wendy say goodbye. So is it, to her yeah, is it even the Wendy Williams show, though? Has it, when's the last time it's actually been the Wendy Williams show? Does she still get paid? Like, I've never seen anything like this. Well, other people are hosting, I wonder. Like For, for years, I, I believe, right? A couple, two years, a year and a half, something like that. But, you know, but shout out to the staff when uh, Gia and I was uh, doing a tour for the book. We stopped through there, and it was so nice, so pleasant, so... Uh, and it was, it was a couple of people that actually used to work here. So shout to the whole Wendy Williams staff, man. I appreciate you guys. You guys showed us so much love when we stopped through there. Yeah, I don't even know. If, I don't know if she gets paid. Yeah, that's a great question. I mean, but they've been using her you know, her likeness and her name. And I'm sure that name still brings uh, brings in ratings. So I would assume she still gets some type of check. I wonder if they tried to get her on the final episode. Mm. All right. Well, Squid Game, the challenge reality series, is coming to Netflix. So, that's going to see contestants competing in games inspired by the show. And the winner is going to get $4.56 million. So, it's going to be a total of 456 contestants, and that's the grand prize. Netflix is saying that is the largest cash prize in the history of reality TV. What they got to do, though. Listen, red light, green light. <laughs> nah, they ain't going to hurt nobody, but I'm curious to what they got to do. You uh, crazy. You think they wouldn't hurt somebody right now? All of this uh, inflation is sky high. You know what I'm saying? People still trying to pay off uh, PPP loans. But what, what all kind do? of other stuff. Like, what could they possibly do? Like, they're not going to hurt anybody. Nobody's going to get hurt. It's, it's got to be safe. You is know? People, it, it, envy, is people, getting, is people getting hurt out here for money now? What are you talking about? So, you could, so you're illegally allowing somebody to hurt someone to get, to get paid? I don't know if that's what they're going to do, but I'm just assuming because it's Squid Game. Would it's you compete? Steps. Would you compete? You're going to compete, but nobody's going to get hurt. Well, anybody who does want to compete, that uh, website is SquidGameCasting.com. Smart though. <laughs> you know they've. I mean, it's going to have to be some extreme two. stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is. It's, it's going to have to. It's going to have to be because you've already had like Fear Factor and shows like that. So if you do it based off what we saw from Squid Games, the TV show, the actual game is going to have to be that extreme. Mm-hmm. 
All right, Meg Thee Stallion is going to be on P Valley. She'll be on there as Tina Snow, though, just a FYI. So uh, that's huge. And by the way, P Valley is doing amazing this season. It's their second season. They're up to episode two so far. It was like a 1,018% increase in viewership from last year, which they say is the largest increase ever at Stars for a a series. So congratulations to everybody over at P Valley. Amazing, amazing show. You know I love it. All right, now, um, ASAP Rocky is talking about, he was in Interview Magazine. It was him and Gerard Carmichael. You know, they they interviewed, what they do is they put together two celebrities to do these discussions all the time. And one thing ASAP Rocky said is, rap is in its adolescence and it's it's been stuck here since Soldier Boy. Before everybody looked 35 and up, when Lil Wayne and Jay-Z and T.I. and Jeezy and Ross was on, rappers looked old. Like we had little Bow Wow and that was it. That all changed with the internet and self-releasing. Now rap is stuck in this braggadocious adolescent space. It's not as mature. And so people believe that Soulja Boy was responding on Instagram Live to this interview. Whether or not he really was, I don't know, but that's what people believe. And here's what he said on Live. Come on, man. No, stop listening to people, bro. Niggas don't know what the f they talking about on gang. That's what I found out, bro. Niggas be on my Instagram, be on Twitter, be in person, talking, 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 talking about nothing. Bro, what is you talking about, bro? What is you talking about? We talking about everything but how to get some money. Every mother Come on, man. All right, so not sure. But I have to read the article because mm-hmm. I don't understand the context. Is he saying yeah, folks confused. used to look younger? Are they are they carried themselves more mature? What is he, I don't get. What, is, what is I he think saying? he's saying rap is uh, is like a braggadocious younger type of space now, where before it used to be a lot more mature. You know, and they looked more I mature. With that. And not that all rappers doing braggadocious stuff, but there's other rappers doing a bunch of other stuff as well, right? Mm-hmm. It's not just. Everybody's yeah, but, bragging about something. What about? Hmm? Well, maybe ASAP's too young to remember, like Crisscross and uh, a, a Legal and um, another Bad Creation. Like, like I, I don't. I always thought hip hop was trended younger. Yeah, I think he might be too young for that. Yeah, that that was a little. That was before that. Far back, yeah. All right. Well, that is your I'm, rumor report. I, you have to go after that. I was born. In, I was born in 1978, sir. Okay, that's that's the beauty of uh, being 43 years old. You you've seen a lot. You got a bird's eye view of things. Yeah, but you had to go after that. After Chris, he's Cross, talking about when he was coming up. Yeah. yeah, when he was coming up, which would have been what? Yeah, Ten Jay-Z, years later, Jay Z was rocking. Ti was young at the time. No, Ti. Who else was rocking during? But that's time? what I'm saying. Like Ti was young. Like all of those guys were in their early 20s. Like, I mean, it was I, so- maybe he's talking about the content was more mature. I don't. I don't know. I, I don't know. There was so many. All right. Well, anyway. Charlamagne, who are you giving that down to? Uh, for after the hour, we need a doctor named Susan L. Jarose, uh in the Texas Children's Hospital in Houston, Texas, to come to the front of the congregation. We'd like to have a word with them, please. All right. We'll get to that next. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. Your mornings will never be the same. Leaving a child in a hot vehicle can lead to their death very quickly. If you see a child left unattended, call 911. If the child looks unresponsive, do what it takes to get him or her out safely. Paid for by NHTSA. Don't be out here acting like a donkey. Hee haw, bitch. Hee haw. It's time for Donkey of the Day. <laughs> I'm a big boy. I can take it. If he feel I deserve it, ain't no big deal. I know Charlamagne guy gonna have some funny shit to say out his mouth. If you gotta say something you may not agree with, doesn't mean I'm mean. Who's getting that donkey? That donkey. That don't, 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 don't. Donkey of the Day right there. <laughs> the, the Breakfast Club, bitches. You can call me the Donkey of the Day, but like, I mean no harm. Doc here today for Wednesday, June 15th, goes to Dr. Susan L. Jarose and the Texas Children's Hospital in Houston, Texas. Salute to everyone who listens to us on 93.7 The Beat in Houston, Texas. What's happening? Drop on the clues bombs for 93.7 The Beat. <laughs> Ashley, what's happening? Uh, I truly feel like there is certain places mistakes shouldn't happen. Yes, I understand mistakes are a part of life. We are all going to make them. But certain professions you have to measure not once but twice to ensure that you only have to cut once. In certain instances, you should measure twice and then bring in some fresh eyes and let them measure twice to make sure that the cut you are making is absolutely the right one. Now, who are these people who cannot afford to get things wrong? Well, police officers, 
Okay, once you mistake someone's cell phone for a gun and kill an unhar- un- unharmed human, unarmed human, uh, there's no coming back from that. Uh, doctors, surgeons, imagine going in for a BBL and you end up getting a kidney transplant. That wouldn't be nice, would it? And Chick-fil-A workers, uh, just to name a few. Just to name a few professions in our community that simply can't afford to make a mistake. The stakes are too damn high. And that is what happened at the Texas Children's Hospital last August. See, they are currently being sued for up to $1 million, which I feel is too low, simply because the doctor there made a mistake. What kind of mistake, Uncle Charla? Huh? What kind of mistake did they make, Brother Lenard? Well, let's go to KPRC2 News for the report, please. Just try to imagine how you would feel if your four-year-old son went in for laparoscopic surgery to solve a hernia problem in the genital area and instead wound up getting what amounts to a partial vasectomy. That is what this lawsuit alleges happened to a four-year-old Fort Bend County boy at Texas Children's Hospital last August. The boy's family now suing the doctor and TCH for up to $1 million. So the doctor went in laparoscopically, which means not an open incision, and doing it on a 2D model on television, failed to identify exactly what she was cutting, and she cut the wrong tube. In the lawsuit, both Texas Children's Hospital and Dr. Susan R. Giros are named as defendants. The lawsuit claiming the boy, who is now five years old, will more than likely have to contend with fertility issues later in life and will have to face future medical expenses, future pain, mental anguish, future disfigurement, physical impairment, and future expenses for fertility treatments. (laughs) Great question posed by KPRC2 News. Imagine how you would feel if your four-year-old son went to the hospital for a lap dance astrology. What's the thing called? How you pronounce it? Play it again. Let me hear it. Just try to imagine how you would feel if your four-year-old son went in for laparoscopic surgery to solve a hernia There you go. Problem. There you go. There you go. I got it now. Yes, your, your four-year-old son went in for lap dog astrology to solve a hernia problem and instead wound up getting his cable cut off. That little boy, that child who was probably barely in kindergarten, wound up getting what amounts to a partial vasectomy. Now, look, I tell y'all often, I'm not the highest grade of weed in the dispensary, nor am I the strongest Avenger. But if I'm a doctor, common sense should tell me that I highly doubt this little child is here for a vasectomy. Usually, four-year-olds are the reason that parents consider vasectomies. Because when you have done that a few times, like my wife and I have, we have uh, four kids to be exact, there comes a point when, you know, you or most times your significant other want the cords cut, all right? They want the Wi-Fi removed and your Keystone pipeline shut down. Okay, I'm getting a vasectomy, all right? Has to happen, all right? Wife said that's what she wants me to do because my pullout game is trash, even though I don't agree with my pullout game being trash because we've been together 24 years and I only got four kids. So that's not really a great field goal percentage. I mean, technically I've only hit four shots in 24 years, but that's neither here nor there. I'm 43 years old. I'll be 44 in about 14 days. So me at 44 and a few gray hairs on my balls, if I was in the doctor's office for a hernia and somehow or another you had a brain lapse and thought I was there for a vasectomy and cut the wrong cord, it's still wrong, but at least understandable. Okay, in the case of this four-year-old child, you couldn't have possibly thought this little boy done had one too many churn, and now he's turning the plumbing off. Okay, this is also why folks have to stop depending so much on technology. Technology is great, but uh, in the case of this doctor, she was looking at a 2D model on TV, and the 2D by looking at the 2D model on TV, she failed to identify exactly what she was cutting, and she cut the wrong tube. Okay, maybe, just maybe, you need to go back to identifying things with your naked eye and not through the lens of a screen. All right, according to the lawsuit, this little now five-year-old boy will more than likely contend with fertility issues later in life and will have to face future medical expenses, future pain, mental anguish, future disfigurement, physical impairment, and future expenses for fertility treatments, all because Dr. Susan L. Jarose got his order wrong like she works at Kentucky Fried Chicken. Sorry, KFC, but it is just a statistical fact that y'all are most likely to mess up someone's order. Please give the Texas Children's Hospital and Dr. Susan L. Jarose the sweet sounds of the Hamiltons, please. Oh, now you are the donkey of the day.
All right. Well, and also, mm-hmm. this family, this family should be suing for more than a million dollars. Okay, we got to start the lawsuit at a hundred million or better. All right, you might be keeping this man from producing future kids. What if the next Jeff Bezos was coming out that little boy nutsack? All right, or the next Oprah Winfrey? All that future revenue gone because this doctor don't know the difference between a 4.0 and a 4.6. Nah, man, you got to sue. You got to aim much higher with that uh, that lawsuit. A million dollars is not enough. All right. Well, thank you for that donkey of the day. Up next, mm-hmm. ask ye 800-585-1051. If you need relationship advice or any type of advice, call ye right now. She'll help you out with all your problems. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. Come on. Need relationship advice? Need personal advice? Just need real advice. Call up now for Ask Ye. Keep the bread. Morning, everybody. It's DJ MV Angela Yee, Charlamagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. It's time for Ask Ye. Hello, who's this? It's Charnel. Oh my God, I cannot believe I got through. Good morning, Charnel. <laughs> hey, Charnel. Hey. What's your question for Ye? <laughs> yeah, so my question is um, how, if you're at a job, do, how do you go about asking for a raise? Because right now I moved up at my job. I've been here about four years and I moved up. I'm oh, sorry, y'all so nervous. I moved up from basically like a regular person, then I was a supervisor, and now like I'm a trainer for the whole company. But when I became a trainer, they never gave me any more compensation. Okay. It's the same amount of money, but it's more work. Okay, so did you ever have a meeting with your whoever's in charge of that in uh, your office to discuss a raise? So basically what happened was um, they basically kind of gave me the position because I was good at what I was doing at the time and I was good at training. Mm -hmm. But then I got like a letter from HR, like my manager didn't say anything. I just got a letter from HR with my new badge, with my new title, and it said on the letter that no further compensation, blah, blah, blah. So basically I would not be getting more compensation for my role. But Uh, I'm doing way more work. Like, for example, right now, I live in the state of South Carolina, Mm -hmm. but I work in the state of North Carolina, and I drive an hour every single day. Okay. So, So (laughs) a couple of things here. Um, You do need to negotiate, right? When you receive a letter like that, you should be like, well, can we discuss this new position and the new responsibilities and the financial compensation for those responsibilities? Because it is important for you to really advocate for yourself at work. And so... Uh, do you know who the person is that you have to talk to about getting a raise? Like, who's in charge of that? Yes, and really quick, you there's one more part to this. Okay. So, my review was due back in January, and now it's June, and my manager still has not did my yearly review. So, I've been waiting on her for six months. Okay. Every time I ask her about it, it's like, oh, we're going to do it. And I'm like... I can't even get to that point to even... Oh, girl, you know how many people have told me these stories about their managers not doing the reviews that they're supposed to do and not being accountable? And then you feel a little hesitant to go above their head because you don't know if there'll be some backlash from your manager because now I went above you. And so... Mm-hmm. Exactly. That's the exact position I'm in right now. All right. So I had a similar situation where I did end up having to go above the person who I was going to about getting a raise, right? I asked him, well, I went, sat down with him. He told me I would get a raise. And then he just kept putting it off, putting it off. And it was literally months that nothing was happening. And I did end up having to go above him. Now, have you documented yourself just asking about this review? Because I think it's really important to have an email trail of you just requesting these things to see how long it's gone on. Yes, I do. Because when it became, I believe, May, I asked her about my review. And she said, oh, we'll do it this Friday. That Friday came, another Friday came, and then nothing ever happened. Okay. Well, I think that does give you justification to feel like I'm trying to get things done properly and to have to go above your manager's head. Can you do that? Yes, I can. Okay. Now, with a position, I kind of have a relationship now with HR more than I did before. All right. So that's important because this person's not handling their responsibilities and it's affecting you at work. So what I would do is set up a meeting with HR and bring those emails and say, you know, I just want to make sure that I, you guys have given me this new position that has these new um, responsibilities that are in adi- that are additional responsibilities I didn't have before at this rate, right? Because right now it is uh-huh. definitely a time to be asking for those things as it is hard for people to um, 
you know, get amazing employees like yourself, right? So for you to be able to go in there, document what those responsibilities are. This is what I was getting paid for these previous responsibilities. Now these are additional, which should I should be compensated for as well. Also know what your expectations are. See what other people who are doing comparable work to you are getting paid. They have all different kinds of websites and apps where you can see what people are making in similar positions so you can compare and know what it is that you ask for because if they say okay what would you like to make you need to have an answer for that to be able to negotiate and when you go in there you're not asking for a raise because you want one you're asking for a raise because you deserve one not because you need it because you have to drive an hour to get to work but because this comes with new responsibilities you really enjoy working there you were very enthusiastic to get this but you do feel like you're not being compensated fairly how can we rectify this situation and that's how you need to approach it okay thank you so much he is an oh, is uncle charlotte there today he's here peace peace how are you charlotte. i'm in the eighth floor what's happening queen <laughs> my hey what, <laughs> what part of the eight four three you in i am in bennettsville south carolina which is near dillon bennettsville what's happening okay all right, well, go get that raise, okay, Chanel? You got this. Good luck, mama. And if not, remember, you got options, okay? Somebody with your skills, and, um, you know, you they you will be an asset anywhere else. Ask ye 800-585-1051. If you need relationship advice or any type of advice, call ye now. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. Here's some real advice with Angela Yee. It's Ask Ye. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV, Angela Yee, Charlamagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. We're in the middle of Ask Yee. Hello, who's this? Hi, this is Andrea. Andrea, good morning. What's, what's your question for Yee? Good morning, and thank you for taking me. Um, I have been this side chick for the last 11 years. Mm. and um, Congratulations. I want to... I know, right? Um, but the thing is, I won't leave because he's financially taking care of me. So what do I do? Do I leave or do I stay? That's I'm, I, I barely work and all my bills get paid. Do you want to have your own relationship with somebody that you can be with? Or are you content with your situation? Um, it goes both ways. I'm pretty content with it. When he talked about leaving and me and him being together, I kind of freaked out. So at any point, he could potentially leave you, right? It might be time for you to figure out how to live without an allowance. Facts. I mean, you got to think about the future. He could leave you today and then you'll be stuck. Don't you want to be a, a person that can hold it down and then make decisions based on who you really want to be with, not based on your financial needs? And that's the thing. Every time I try to leave, something in life happens and he ends up coming through and kind of saving me. And that's so unfortunate. Like... I wanted to leave, my mom died, and he paid for a lot of stuff in that. And then I wanted to leave again, I lost my job. He started to pay my rent. So I, I, I don't know. Girl, you better get up off your feet because I'm going to tell you this, right? First of all, what you're doing as a side piece at any moment, that's a, a risky situation. You don't know, his wife never found out about you? No, she knows about me. Oh, knows. Um, it's funny when you guys were talking about have you ever been reached out to as the side has the type to ever reached out to you. I never reached out to her, but years ago she tried to friend me on Facebook, but I didn't know the name, so I wouldn't accept the friend. Mm -hmm. Okay, but y'all never spoke. So, no. Okay, because she could tell him you got to leave. It. She could show up at your doorstep. She found your Facebook, right? Yeah, Are these and that's the thing. I'm a firearms instructor. I told him, do I have to worry about this person who I've never seen in my life coming, running up on me because she's been on my social media? She knows what I look like. I have no clue on who she is. And she clearly knows your name as well, which means she could easily find out where you work, where you live, and all of those things. Do you want to live your yeah. life looking over your shoulder, being somebody's side piece, being reliant on this person so that you could pay your bills? Because it seems like what you're doing right now is just what's comfortable for you. And you need to get yeah. out of that. One day, don't you want to have your own man? Uh, I, I like living life freely. Okay. I've never wanted to be married, never wanted any kids, and I'm over 40 now. I'm not saying that you want to be married and have kids, but don't you want to not be with somebody else's dude? Yeah, yeah. You know, I get like wanting to make decisions about being married, having kids. That's amazing. But what I'm saying is, do you want to be the person that is a side piece? Because you're clear, you clearly know you're doing the wrong thing and you're taking this man's money. He's taking advantage of a situation because he knows you're dependent on him. It never feels good to be dependent on somebody. Yeah. 
Definitely. So, so get your life together because at any moment this could end for you. And I would hate to see you in a situation where you're getting evicted or you don't know where your next meal is coming from because this man done left you. Thank you. All right. All right. Thank you very much. Have a great day, you guys. You too. She sounds really happy, though. <laughs> Ask ye. 800-585-1051. If you need relationship advice or any type of advice, you can call ye now. Now we got rumors on the way. Yes, let's talk about the Freshmans, right? The XXL Freshman list has been released, and we'll tell you who made it. All right, we'll get into that next. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ MV, Angela Yee, Charlamagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. Let's get to the rumors. Let's talk the XXL Freshman cover. This is The Rumor Report with Angela Yee. Rumor has it. All right, well, it's that time. The 2022 XXL Freshman class has been announced. So let's talk about this year's list. And, you know, people get excited for the freestyles, which will be coming later as well. Mm -hmm. But Nardo Wick. Okay, Dochi. You guys familiar with Dochi? Mm -hmm. She signed a TDE. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. She's from Tampa. Uh, Sofago made the list. Babyface Ray. Mm Mm-hmm. Cali, Casey, Cochise, Big 30, Ken the Man, Big Scar, Saucy Santana, and the 10th spot winner, even though there were more names than that this year, uh, is Baby Tron. So, any questions, guys? Yeah, I'm glad they still do this list, but are, are these people, like, really considered freshmen? Because I've been bumping Big 30, Big Scar for a minute. Babyface Ray been out here spoken, uh, smoking for a minute. I feel like Nardo's Nardo been, been out here doing his thing. I feel like Nardo's been out for about yeah, so it just, a couple years. It, it just feels like by the time, yeah, it just feels like by the time they make this cover nowadays, they're already popping. I mean, they're still newer artists, though. Yeah, they're still newer artists, That's, that's yeah, the point of it. You got to get to a certain point to make the freshman list. You can't be like, no one's ever heard of you before. You have to be heard of, have a good buzz, and then you make the freshman list. Because they want to make sure that you actually have some staying power in order to be on that list. Because then they do a big push for you. Yeah, that's still There's new the concert. Absolutely. So Yeah, so I think it's an honor for people to still make it or, or they would turn it down. I just thought some of them would have been on I'm, I'm last sure, year's I, list. It just feels like they're kind of late. Nah, good, I don't but think still, so. It has to have artists, though. But yeah, they're not established like a J. Cole or a Ken. But you know, it's a a great big push for them. Like I'm sure all of them were excited to be on that list. So congratulations, yeah, for sure. But Congrats to them. It feels like they're late, but. Mm-hmm. I mean, last year's list, if you guys remember, it was Koi Larey, Pooh Shiesty was on the list last year. Uh, Lakia, DDG, 42 Doug, Ruby Rose, Two uh, C. So it's always nice to look back and see like who was on the list in previous years and see where they are now. Mm-hmm. So congratulations. I saw Callie posted out Double XL, my body. So happy I can share this with y'all. Thank you so much, Double XL. So happy to be part of freshman class of 2022. Big 30 uh, said, appreciate the love and support to my fans. Appreciate y'all for riding with Ball. And Big Scar said, young, rich, and we're from the South. Putting on, catch me on Double XL. Baby Tron said, this for everybody who counted me out. This is a global takeover. And um, so congratulations okay. to them. All right. Now let's talk about uh, Grant Hill. Grant Hill was recently uh, doing an interview on All the Smoke. And he was talking about playing with Shaquille O'Neal. And the humor that he would provide. Here's what he had to say about one incident that happened with Jay Rich. I remember one time we... It's so bad, man. This <laughs> <laughs> man, we you know we're in the showers after practice, and he goes to Jay Rich. Jay Rich, you got a fat ass, man. <laughs> so, I'm like, how do you come back? Like, how? Like, what does Jay Rich do, man? Like, oh, like, you know what I'm saying? Shaq was just funny. Shaq is he funny. He was too. nasty. He yeah. was crazy. Big old kid. That's Jason Richardson. He's let me go. About. Let me go Google uh, Jay Richardson. Yo, what's oh, wrong Jay, with you, Jay, man? Jay, Jay Richardson? What is wrong with you? I want to see. I want. I want to go see what made Shaq say that. For a man to tell another man that, then that means Jay Richardson got those cheeks. You said that before, too. Yeah, y'all sure both said that to someone who was up here one time. Now, Ro James was up here. Shout out to Ro James. Ro James was, came up here for Ro James had them cheeks. And Ro, Ro James was doing the drop. Ro James had them cheeks. I saw Ro James. He was like, can you tell them to please stop saying that about me? <laughs> Ro James had those cheeks. Charlamagne okay. was like, you know, And you first know. of all, Ro James, yeah, he, Ro James had let, let the record show. We objectified Ro James in his face. We didn't yeah, talk about him behind his yeah, back. No. So okay. That was the first thing we mentioned when he, when we cracked right. the mic. 
when he sat down. Pause. All right, and now make I'm- sure you subscribe to the All the Smoke podcast on the Black Effect iHeartRadio podcast network. One of the best podcasts out there today. All right, a man who posed as Golden State Warriors, uh, Clay Thompson, has been banned from the team's home court. He recorded himself walking into the uh, Chase Center, and he shot around for 10 minutes before the NBA Finals game on Monday. So he goes... So nobody knew that wasn't Clay. No, he... And this was in Golden State, right? Yeah. He goes by Big Dawes TV on social media. He posted a photo of what he said is a letter that is banning him. And it's signed by the Warriors Vice President of Security. It says, you are banned indefinitely from attending any future NBA, WNBA, G League, or 2K League games or any concert or event held at Chase Center. Any violation of you being found at any of these properties, whether ticketed or not, you will be subject to arrest for criminal trespass. Seems like the security yeah, staff uh, should be in trouble. If anybody. Well, I mean, they've been knowing Fake Clay for a while, though. Like, Fake Clay been around for a, a, a long time. Yeah, like, but Fake he's, Clay he's, got, got, like, a popping YouTube page yeah, and everything. Does, like, but he's shooting for he's 10 not minutes. He's new. He's shooting for 10 minutes on the court. Because they're used to seeing him. Like, this is... They've been seeing him for, like, the past seven, eight years. <laughs> Well, in like a series of tweets, the guy. he did complain about the ban. He said he was losing $10,000 on season tickets and that he passed through several layers of incompetent security. Yeah, security but then he did say in. the venue had every right to ban him. Yeah, security let him in. The security is the problem. What, what, what was that uh, where the lady tackled that, that woman? What, 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 what stadium was that? They need that security. Now, he said, was it worth it to lose ten k on tickets and be banned for life? Absolutely. I was an NBA player for 10 minutes, bro. Yeah, he should have been. Bad. Now, has the have the Warriors confirmed this? Because uh, I I haven't seen where the Warriors or the Chase Center confirmed that he was actually banned. Well, no, they have not responded to any uh, questions or any requests for comment at this point. But um, they did leave uh, make a statement to the San Francisco Chronicle saying that a person falsely impersonated a Warriors player in a deliberate attempt to access unauthorized areas within Chase Center. And so they did make that statement. That's pretty funny. And that person received a lifetime ban. Um, but he did say he's being contacted by a lot of news organizations to do interviews. And he said, as of now, I will not be doing any, any, don't want to make this a bigger deal than it is. The Chase Center has every right to ban me. I get it. No hard feelings. Had fun doing it. Mm. You know, you got to know there might be some consequences. All right. Well, I'm Angela Yee, and that is your rumor report. All right. The People's Choice Mix is up next. Get your request in. And again, shout out to everybody coming out this Sunday in Houston. It's going to be 100 degrees in Houston this Sunday. So the car show is the place to be. We will have AC. We will have air conditioning. So you ain't got to worry. A lot of people are like, oh, it's going to be outside. No. My car shows are inside. So you're hey, going to be okay. Hmm? Let me tell y'all something. Hmm? Texas is a different level of hot. I was in Dallas this weekend. Um, I went to go celebrate the, the, the good brother, Bishop T.D. Jakes. It was his 65th birthday. Dropping the clues bombs for uh, Bishop T.D. Jakes. His birthday was on the knife, I believe, but they had the celebration this weekend. Yo, it was 108 degrees in Dallas. Yeah. It's hot. 108. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's hot. Like, it's a different level of hot in Texas. My I don't goodness. know what y'all got going on in Texas, but it's a different level of hot in Texas. All right. Well, we'll see you this Sunday in Houston, all right? People's Choice Mixes up next. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. Your mornings will never be the same. Angela Yee here. The General Insurance is a quality insurance company that's been saving people money for nearly 60 years. Switch to The General and you could save over $500. Call 800-GENERAL or visit thegeneral.com. The General Auto Insurance Services, Inc., an insurance agency, Nashville, Tennessee. Some restrictions apply. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Angela Yee, Charlemagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. Good morning. Good morning. Right. Good morning. How was your hey, you know what I was saying earlier? You know what I want to learn how to do? That's what I was about to ask. What? I want to learn how to braid hair. I want to learn how to braid hair because I got four daughters. You could learn that and, on YouTube. You know, no, I want somebody to actually teach me. Like I seen, uh, I saw somebody like braid my daughter's hair the other day, and it was, it's phenomenal. My, she, they braided my six-year-old hair. And I was like, damn, that's dope. Like, y'all want to learn how to braid hair because my three-year-old was like, bra- she asked me to braid her hair. And I'm like, I don't know how to braid, baby. You don't know how to but do three I would braids? love to I learn. Three braids, whatever, whatever that's called. Nah, I don't want. I want to. I want to learn how to do it. Do you it. You want to do like? You know what I'm saying? Like, and... nah, I can't do that. I could just do like the little. Yeah. Braids. Yeah. yeah no, nah, I don't know how to do that. Oh, if y'all could do like a fishtail, a fishtail braid. I don't even know what that means. I have no idea what that is. <laughs> but I want to learn how to braid. I think that's something I might pick up. I'm telling you though, it is really easy to learn if you just go on YouTube. It's so easy if you just do it that way. You could do it at your own pace. Practice that way. Mm-hmm. That don't feel right. I'm not gonna lie. That don't. My ancestors don't agree with that. 
I, I just felt like every black ancestor in me that was like, don't you learn how to braid no damn hair on YouTube? Like, if you got to learn how to braid hair on YouTube, you might not be black. If you want to learn how to do any special braids, I mean, you got to learn some way, somehow, and it is 2022. People learn how to do a lot of stuff. Yeah, your fingers might be YouTube. too old for that, bro. Nah. Uh, yeah, I'm going I'm to learn by watching uh, other black women that know how to do it. They're that's on what, YouTube, That's what too. I want to learn from. <laughs> All right, well, well. Yeah, I'd rather sit down with them. Now uh, it's time to get up out of here, Charlamagne. You got a positive note? Yes. Uh, I, uh, two things. I want to. Um, I got the positive note coming, but I want to tell everybody. Uh, thank you for coming out to check out um, eighty eight at the Tribeca Film Festival. Um, eighty eight is a movie that I executive produced that stars Brandon Victor Dixon and Atari Naughton and Orlando Jones and Amy Sloan. Bunch of great people. Uh, we've had two screenings thus far. Saturday was sold out. Uh, last night was sold out, and the next screening is June eighteenth at um, the Village East by Angelica uh, in Theater 6 at 2.15 p.m. So if you want to go check out... The Angelica. Oh, Angelica. Okay. Yes, the Village East by uh, the Angelica Theater, Saturday, June 18th, Theater 6 at 2.15 p.m. If you want to go see uh, 88, there's still some tickets available. So a uh, salute to everybody that's been coming to check out 88 at the Tribeca Film Festival. We had a great screening last night. Um, yeah, and that's that. So the positive note is simply this. Stop trying to drag people with you to the next level. Everyone does not want to improve like you do. Breakfast club, bitches! Y'all finished or y'all done?